Hello, welcome to any combo lords joining me there. Here we are on a nice springtime day in our combo classroom, where here we have a little extra stream like I like to do with some little mathematical topics, stories, philosophical thoughts and such that may not sneak onto the main combo class channel. For those who are here for the pure focused math lessons, make sure to check the combo class channel tomorrow because I have our first full math episode of grade negative two coming out. There's been a few transitional phases of switching grades where we did a grade negative one final exam. We did a grade negative one finale documentary adventure thingy and we did a grade negative two intro episode. But the intro episode was mostly just similar to my grade negative one intro, a little three or four minute, couple gags, welcome type of deal. Less of a focused little lesson of any sort. And the past few episodes in general have felt a little more along the lines of the episodes I was calling Snack Breaks, where the first few got that nickname because I was talking about botany while we took our little break to chat philosophically and such, talking about what plants are surprisingly edible, which will return in the future. But our snack breaks sort of veered out toward wanting to include science breaks and stuff as well, like I did a little episode about bubbles. And the finale and intro episode were a little more along that mood, appreciating nature, talking about some overall things we may have learned or things to be appreciative of, and taking some little adventures and new surprises and stuff. But none of that was really a focused math lesson, which is what many people like, and I do really like making. And so, although we've done some bonus math lessons on this channel this week, some people at a first glance think those aren't too different from the episodes on the Combo Class channel, but they're pretty different because the bonus lessons I put on this channel are typically ones that I film in a single take, not meaning it's necessarily my first take. Sometimes I mess up the first minute and I'm like, let's redo it, but meaning that whichever take I end up getting it all correct to myself, I pretty much just trim that file without doing any actual editing together. And so, and then I whip up those thumbnails much quicker and titles and such. And so, oh, by the way, there's a nice bird back here. So there's a lot of bird seeds spilled and the squirrels and birds have been getting really comfortable. And I guess they're getting comfortable with my voice as well. Can you see this bird? There it is. You see that bird? When it hops, you'll surely see it. It's on the chair right now. So we're gonna get more birds hanging out around here at times. That fella looks nice. Hey fella, you want a little seed? Let me throw you a little pile of seed. Hey buddy, you want some seeds? Here's some seeds. Uh, that noise spooked him, but maybe he heard the seed noise and he'll come back. So. The squirrels were hanging out right before the stream too. And in fact, if I need to take a break at any point to run inside during the stream, one thing I'm going to surely do is grab a fancier sort of nut for the squirrels because they've been giving me glorious cameos where in the finale, we got some new stuff where squirrels were having fun. In the intro to grade negative two, for the first time, a squirrel ran by and knocked over a clock by running by. You can see that in the intro. And then, in the new episode that I just filmed, the math one that's coming out tomorrow, although it's pure numbers for the topic, we do get some squirrel cameos in the background, and we got another first as far as squirrel cameos, which is two squirrels in a row chasing each other down the fence. So we get a double squirrel. Uh, I see that in the yard a bunch, but I think it's the first time that it's snuck into an episode, the first time it's happened while I was saying one of my mathematical lines on film that we got a two in a row squirrel. So they're giving us all sorts of wonderful cameos. They do steal, you know, the fruits in the summertime occasionally, but I'm cool with that. They don't pick the trees clean. They're not a nuisance to us, it's just a couple of them. And so, well, I'm not sure how many there are, but I think it's a small amount of them total, probably. But in any case, the squirrels have become 
more and more of my friends over the grade, and I will be leaving them nice little nuts on the fence back there, and maybe it'll encourage them to stop by the background. So keep an eye out for the double squirrel cameo in next episode. We also filmed part of the episode in front of a different location with, where we brought the big whiteboard next to a redwood tree, so that looks nice. And... Overall, it's a very mathy episode. I don't want to spoil the topic, but people who like mathy stuff will like it. It's something that I think a whole definition in math should be redefined to include more stuff. And I'm saying how this common concept that you all probably know is that the concept that is getting extended in the episode, 99% of people who watch my videos will know. The extension that I think is super logical and should be part of the definition maybe 5% of you have encountered or thought of 10%. I don't know. It's way smaller amount. Know about the full abilities of, of what we can do with this. And then we go for even that five or 10%. Don't worry. There's also a lot of other math mixed in of how we could take things even further. I know that's really vague, but you'll just have to wait till tomorrow. And then the episode's coming. So, to somebody who said I should make a classroom for the squirrels in the comments here, that's a good thought. I could set them up a little miniature desk and such. In fact, what I would like is I've wanted the squirrels on this desk so I can be teaching and have a squirrel on the desk while I'm teaching. And I think that I'll be able to lure one on with a nut at some point. And at some point we're gonna have a shot where I'm just telling the math line, just ignoring a squirrel who's also hanging out right there eating a nut. So that's, pretty cool. And there's um, the chance that if I want to build a little classroom for a squirrel, I could do it on the desk. We could do an iterated miniature desk. Maybe my desk will have a smaller desk on it for the squirrels. And if they choose, they could iterate the process further if they seem to want an even smaller desk. So maybe the squirrel could have a pet worm or something. Maybe that pet worm has a pet ant. We can, we can iterate the miniature desks. And to whoever asked if I can make a video about the meaning of existence, well, that's a very big topic, and it's something that many of my videos will hint toward. But of course, there's not going to be one end-it-all answer. There's going to be almost knowledge we can gain about understanding existence in the form of hypotheses and questions. And so I will make more philosophical episodes that are about various topics that relate to the meaning of ex meanings of existence, but I probably wouldn't call one, this is the meaning of existence, because that's too grandiose of a thing that our whole lives are practically based on. And so there could be episodes that are about, hey, look, this is one way to interpret existence that's cool, or hey, look, here's a extra cool thing within existence that should be appreciated more, or things like that. But I don't think I would call one, this is the meaning of existence here. That sounds like uh, auto clickbait. You can't make a video that's gonna live up to that title. So someone says in a little seat with nuts and yep, I will, I've been researching what types of nuts the squirrels actually want because they're eating all my bird seed, but I don't know if that's what they like the best or what's healthiest for them. So it looks like unsalted walnuts they really like, unsalted pecans or pecans or whatever they really like, and some other types of nuts that are those bigger, wrinklier ones, and you don't want to have them salted, otherwise it might dehydrate your squirrel. It's been raining a lot, so there's a lot of little puddles in all sorts of areas of the yard like that are practically bird baths of their own, so I haven't had to worry about that. But once it dries up more here, I'll also need to make a little water vessel for the squirrels and birds. Someone's wondering one divided by one divided by zero. That would be undefined in the normal types of math we use because the parenthesis bit that comes first is undefined. So the whole thing is. Now, someone's saying squirrels and mice equal hawks. Uh, there have been hawks in the neighborhood before. I don't think there's been a hawk recently. There are crows in the neighborhood. Uh, I haven't seen a hawk in a while in the neighborhood. So we'll see. I haven't seen hawks recently. My cats try and get the birds and squirrels, but it's very rare that they get a bird. There's only one of my cats who's able, it's the smallest but smartest one of my cats. 
is able to get birds sometimes, occasionally. But I haven't seen them get a squirrel yet. Yeah, I'm always surprised. They chase after the squirrel and I'm like, dude, what are you going to do if you catch that? That thing is like half your size. So. Now someone says that they found that result to be zero after defining a couple operations with division by zero. Now, it is something many people have tried to try and define division by zero as something. But if you look further, you will hit contradictions that destroy the arithmetic of your typical system. You need to reinvent a whole system and say, in my new system, we're allowing dividing by zero. And from scratch, like, does addition work? Does multiplication work? What rules can I now build? You can't take the current system, add that, because it changes almost every rule that you take for granted. You now can't say things like, normal rules about fractions, normal rules about addition. So you, you have to build a system from scratch if you want that, and many people have. There are many fields that have been researched that you can divide by zero, but they lack many of the common traits of arithmetic. So it's one of those things where a lot of people, when you mention dividing by zero or infinitesimal numbers or things like that, people say, oh, but it is really possible. And anything's possible, but it's not possible in the real numbers. And unless we say we're not talking about the real numbers or the complex numbers, then, you know, you got to clarify. If we're not talking about the place where we can assume things like A plus B equals B plus A, parentheses can be rearranged inside a series of multiplied things. So... You, you got to be careful because you'll lose a lot of those rules when you start adding stuff. For example, the complex numbers lose the ordering the real numbers have. The quaternions beyond that lose certain other properties. And by the time you go up to higher dimensional algebras, you have lost things like commutativity, associativity, and many of the, pro uh, the things that we assume are true. Because they are true in the real numbers where 1 divided by 0 is undefined, infinitesimals don't exist, and stuff like that. Now, um, I think those are the comments here, but wait, I, it says I'm on top chat, which is annoying. Don't, don't want to be on top chat. I want to be on all chat. All right. So, um, today what we're going to look at is some various little graph shapes that are pretty fun and some discussions of the new springtime around here, some stuff that actually grew in the classroom back there. And we're going to look at a cool list that, for as far as I know the first time, uh, me or Combo Class got included on a pretty cool online article that listed a bunch of math communicators. And to me, being included on a list like that along the lines of other math channels I watch is very much an honor and makes me way prouder than something like how many views I got on a single video or how many subscribers came that day. And so there's a list we'll look at as well where there's a bunch of cool math resources that I recommend people go through this list on their own later and check all the stuff out. But that for as far as the first, as far as I know, the first time combo class is on one of those lists, which is pretty awesome. So I've only been doing combo class for about a year, but I've worked really hard during that year. And it also was the culmination of a lot of notes I'd taken over previous years. So that's something that makes me pretty proud. We'll look at that list later. And Additionally, some other small things will come up. I should note at the near the beginning of the stream, it's not the beginning, I meant to say this at the beginning, but anyone who's watching this later, after the fact, when you see the video form where it's like all processed, meaning like you can see exactly what time stuff was at, or if you want to take some notes about this while it's live, I haven't been having the time to add timestamps to the last streams, which I originally thought would be really helpful, but I don't always have time for. So if any helpful viewers ever are watching a stream, especially after the fact when you see the exact times and want to comment like times and when I was talking about a random topic or when I was doing a random activity, 
that will be helpful to other combo lords so that when they don't have time to watch the whole stream, they can click to a few moments that they like, that, that they like the sound of what I'm talking about then. So if anyone's ever bored and going through a stream, remember, I will appreciate and sometimes pin as the top comment uh, if somebody comments timestamps of when I was talking about stuff. Additionally, I'll also note we're going to grade negative two. I jumped right into it and still have a very small team because I do almost all of it myself and have a few people I hire to help me film and stuff, such, and a few viewers who help me out with other ways. But if anybody does want to help out with grade negative two in terms of, you know, any sorts of editing, you know, any sorts of art or animations, or you are a graphic designer who wants to whip up thumbnails or things like that. I do a lot of that stuff myself and it's not my favorite parts. So I am interested in discussing possibilities of including other viewers to help me with more editing, animation, and things like that so that I can focus even more of my time on the writing of the brainstorms and the filming of the episodes. And of course, I'm a little nitpicky about overseeing certain editing things, but other things like on a lot of content on this channel, I'm not as picky about and I'm just put it together pretty quickly and it probably could be improved. If anyone does want to reach out to me about that stuff, my email is on the contact link of the page. I'm not sure if you can see it on a phone for some reason. I don't know if it like shows the for business inquiries email on phones. Might have, someone said they had trouble seeing it once. So you might have to look at it on a computer and then you can get there and email me if you want. And um, Stick here, who's also helpful on the Discord, says he's a thumbnail machine, so that could be helpful for sure. The, especially the thumbnails on this channel, I usually make them in a like a minute or two and they're not maximized for catchiness. Thumbnails are very important on YouTube. I care more about making the episode good, but having a hook in your thumbnail and title is at least as important as making the whole episode watchable, not in terms of what you should value out of your art, but in terms of what is gonna get YouTube to keep making your videos go to more people. And to a degree, you gotta play the game. I don't like playing the game because, oh, a bird, because I, find my content to be important and artistic and stuff. So I care a lot more about making the whole episode a little story or arc than I care about having the episode be centered around a digestible hook. But the episodes on the bonus channel could certainly use a little optimizing in their titles and thumbnails because this is, oh, the bird's so close. Cause this is sort of like my playground channel and <laughs> I just make stuff on here. Uh, to those who want the more polished stuff, tomorrow's episode on the main combo class channel, I think you'll all like very great numbery stuff. And like I mentioned, I will be trying to put out an episode every week for the next couple weeks because we're just jumping into a bunch of ideas I have brainstormed already. And then after a few weeks, it'll go to probably an episode every one to two weeks but that's just referring to the main combo class episodes that I always am pretty perfectionist about. There will be content on here most days. The list I was included on actually even mentioned that I stream most days when they put the link to me. Totally fine description because they could only write a small amount and I'm just super happy they linked both channels. It was super cool that they showed the combo class channel and the channel here with the streams and stuff. But uh, it's more accurate to say that I put out some form of content every day that can range from streams to bonus videos to uh, shorts and stuff. P attic numbers. Uh, those won't be in the first half of the grade probably. They will be either later in grade negative two or sometime in grade negative three. I am very interested in the P attic metric. Very cool way of measuring numbers. Sort of gonna be like taking our idea of numeral bases in a different direction, but uh, that's a topic I want to research a little more before I feel like I've definitely, A, been sure I can present an episode the correct way to guide someone into a whole new topic. 
which that's a topic that I only started studying like a year ago. So I'm, I'm going to spend a little more time studying it first. And secondly, I like to always wait until I can see as many connections between a topic and other topics that I've already covered or want to cover so I can show new little connections between things. And someone's saying I should have a video about the history of the entire mathematics, I guess, with the title being a reference to Bill Wirtz, who made that popular videos or videos about the history of the world and about other places. Those videos have a unique style. They're pretty good. Um, I don't watch. I think I've only seen one or two of them, but definitely unique and interesting. Deserves having blown up as a video. And... I don't know if I can cover the entire history of mathematics all at once, but there are certain stories from math that I want to weave into episodes that as I'm telling about a certain topic, there's a really interesting historical story. For example, some historical stories of math that may come up at points in this grade, maybe Fermat's margin note about his last theorem, which I'll explain later <laughs> to those who don't know. and. Another history one that may come up in grade negative two or three is the mathematician Galois dying in a duel when he was very young, like a literal duel. And a few other interesting math, uh, the, when quaternions were discovered, the way that went about, a few interesting math histories will definitely come up. Probably more as individual episodes. I also may make biography-like episodes about some of my favorite mathematicians and the things that I think was unique or interesting about them. Less biography, that will be a section of it, but more about here's a few of the things they discovered, this is how they came to that conclusion and why their brain let them do that. Some mathematicians that may get an episode focused on them could be Euler, Ramanujan, John Conway, uh, Paul Erdish, those are some mathematicians that have had really interesting lives in addition to like they're had a different sort of brain in life that may have related to, well, no, Euler is just that he's the god of math. He did so much. The others are that they had a sort of interesting different way to their approach or brain or background that would be cool to look at how a few of their discoveries relate to. And... Yeah, uh, the, as the comment notes from Corrupt Converter, uh, the note in Fermat's margin was basically like, I've proven this intensely awesome question, a very simple number theory question, but this margin can't fit my proof. And then he died, and then it took them hundreds of years to prove it. <laughs> and somebody's mentioning Perelman, um, but not the guy who solved the Poincaré conjecture. I have. I actually know more about, out of the mathematicians named Perelman, the uh, Poincaré conjecture guy, the Grigory Perelman, more than Yakov, which Grigory Perelman may get an episode about him too. He's one of the guys who solved one of the Millennium problems and then vanished from public eye. Very interesting guy. So, and all those people I mentioned, have traits about them that remind me of myself or about combo class. And so not that I'm going to get to as deep of mathematical discoveries as them, because I'm very scattered and throughout my uh, days, I spend some time on writing books, sometimes on making music and stuff like that. I'm not as focused on a single field as some of those people, but they do have traits that remind me of myself. And so I don't know as much about Yakov Perelman, although I have, read the name come up here and there. Someone's asking if Demotro gets a feature on the Combo Class channel. Uh, it, well, Demotro is the host of the Combo Class channel and the creator. So if you mean if it's, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. On the Combo Class channel itself, it says, here's my bonus channel. If you want to go there, here's my other channel with shorts and live streams. And if you mean on the list that I mentioned that I was included on, uh, that I'll show in a bit, they did mention both channels, which is really awesome. So, um, let's see. Oh, someone asked my thoughts about Andrew Tate. Uh, that's a whole separate 
rabbit hole, but I'll go into it very briefly. That guy sucks, whether he's your idol for trying to be a man or whatever. That guy's lame, he's a weirdo, and he's probably somebody who has hurt many people's lives. There's a lot of charges against him that could be true. And so he's probably been a very negative impact on individual people's lives. He has been a huge negative impact on the world by making young men think that to be manly or masculine, one must have very strange limited opinions about things like women and power and money and stuff. And so that guy, he's lame, he sucks. He should probably be arrested. I haven't spent time reading about his charges, but he's definitely a poor influence on the world. And he does a lot of it just to make money. It's a hustle. He wants to get rich and he knows he can hustle young kids into believing his nonsense. I think that the fact that he's gotten so high up there means he must have some intelligence, but he lacks a lot of morals. And so I think he actually doesn't believe a lot of what he says in his videos and he does it to make a lot of money off young men and make them really misogynistic and weird. So if you're a kid who follows his advice, you'll very quickly get shut down in society and learn that it does not give you power. So that's my opinion. Uh, I have followed very opposite like life or advice or morals or beliefs to what that guy believes. And it's done very well for me. I respect women. I don't believe all the stuff that guy says and it's doing great for me. So <laughs> don't believe whatever that guy says. It's about time to start ignoring him and let him fade off into irrelevancy. But it's worth mentioning because he's already in the news and stuff. I'll say my opinion on that is that the guy's lame, weird, and if you think that there's some goal of masculinity or manliness that you want, he does not actually embody any of that. So those are my opinions. I will, okay, I'll say one more thing since we are on the topic of stuff like that. This is not a very political channel, but there's a lot of stuff in the news right now about the biggest YouTube creator, Mr. Beast, one of his close friends who's been in his videos forever. I know because I actually used to watch Mr. Beast. I found him when he did the counting to 100,000 thing. That was something I had, I think, considered doing, and I looked up if anyone had tried that. And so I, I don't watch that many of his new videos. I sometimes like them, but they're a little Hollywoodish. I don't really like game shows that much. If there's one where he's messing around with his friends, I might watch it because... He's a really good guy. He's done a lot for the planet. He has planted trees. He has done oceans. He has built food banks. He has done a lot of good things for the planet. And one of his old friends who's been in the videos forever uh, came out as non-binary and that they are on a medication that a lot of transgender people are on and got an absurd amount of hate. So I'm just bringing that up to note that if you hate anybody for how they want to live, just, you don't need to be a subscriber here. I can lose a thousand subscribers of the hateful people. I'm fine with that. So no hate in combo class. You will quickly get scolded and then later kicked out of chat after you're scolded if you continue it. If you try and hate on people for whatever. I have friends who are transgender. So in combo class, you're not going to hate on people for stuff like that. The times are behind. In 20 years, people who are hating on that stuff are going to be looked at the same way we look back on racists in the past, homophobic people in the past. So catch up, people. That's all of the political stuff. I don't care if I lose a few subscribers. Combo class is not about hate. So now we can get back to our math. Because <laughs> uh, I love you all, and I love people, and, <laughs> you know, people <laughs> should be able to be what they want to be. I have friends of all sorts of types. So, you know, don't mess with my friends. Now, just getting that out of the way in case in a year or something, I have a bunch of subscribers and one of my friends who's like gay or transgender or black or whatever, some people for some reason hate on is in a video, getting it out of the way that that could happen. And if you're gonna hate on that, you can leave early. 
So now someone asked if I majored in mathematics. Uh, we're going back to math. We're out of the politics because I, I don't want to be a political channel, but I don't think it should be a political issue to just let people be humans. I think politic that's just even almost a moral issue. So done with the political ish stuff. Somebody asked if I majored in mathematics. Uh, I took some math classes in college, but I didn't actually end up setting an official major to a degree. I set my major as one of those ones that is very open and gives you a lot of different things. Um, and so I didn't learn most of my stuff from college. I only took about two years of college. I then switched into working at a music shop and then becoming a music teacher. And throughout that time being obsessed with studying math on my own. And it was a whole separate path that took me from merging my music teaching job and my love of spending hours reading math books, math articles, my own investigations about numbers and so on uh, into this sort of thing. So I guess that's another thing to get out of the way. If anybody doesn't uh, believe mathematical things to the same degree from somebody who doesn't have a four year, eight year, million year degree, then sorry, I'm probably never in my life going to spend the time going back to get a four year degree. I did really good in all of middle school and high school. I had almost straight A's. I was bored of school. I like had been doing more learning outside of school. And I was like, I've been getting almost straight A's. This doesn't feel like another goal to do four more years and continue, oh, get some more A's, get another diploma. Wow. It wasn't helping me as much as studying in other ways. So that's another thing around combo class um, that, you know, if people really care about whether I have a degree or not, sorry, my degree is in graduating, making grade negative one. And I do believe you can trust all the math stuff I say because I'm pretty obsessed with double checking it and pretty obsessed with making sure that I've read things under several sources before I say them. Somebody wants more videos about math related to music. And there will be that. There will be music theory lessons in grade negative two because part of why I quit my music teaching job is because I was sort of burning out on the amount of hours I could spend each week explaining scales and chords and stuff because that was my job. And so I never really worked it into the episodes that much because even though I make a lot of music for fun, it's a decent portion of my day. Like I've soundtracked all the combo class or not every single soundtrack at the beginning. There was a few like public domain stuff, but all the latest combo class episodes, any sound in that was me and the birds. But um, I love music and the only reason I haven't done as much of it yet was because it was also my job and it was kind of burning me out to, um, try and imagine redoing the lessons I was giving to students in video form. And so now I will condense some of those lessons and over time people will learn over the next couple years on this channel, because I'm not going to be like, all right, we're studying piano for a month. Each episode that goes into music, I will still typically try and have one cool specific thing we're learning from that. Like, here's how scales maths work. Here's how the math of chords work or singular little things like that. But over the course of the next couple of years, if you really watch my channel and try practicing your stuff yourself, you could learn piano, guitar, how to make beats, how to read and write sheet music, how to program music, things like that. I will slowly and steadily be teaching people in the mix of, first it's gonna be very math related to connections to math topics we've already done. For example, we're gonna look at uh, 12s and 5s and 7s and how the co-primeness of either five or seven compared to 12 is something we saw in an episode about spiky shapes and something else is uh, related to that is about why our 12 tone scale works. So we are going to do at some point grade negative two, how chords work and how scales work. 
Of course, there's many wit types of chord and scale you could name or invent. It's a free playground, sort of like many fields are. But what I mean by that are the two most common types, which are called major and minor chords and major. And there are three types of minor scale that are most common. There's a bunch of types of minor scale. But uh, we'll be looking at major scales and at least one of the minor scales and major and minor chords at some point this grade. And they relate to a lot of math stuff. And that's part of my method of teaching it. We are going to turn it into straight numbers instead of letters. We're going to, if you see a C sharp or something, we're going to figure out what number to give it in context of somewhere else. Not always going to have the same number. And so when you turn it to numbers and then back to letters, almost like we're translating between bases, we will get patterns that can be slid all over the scale and realm and make it a lot easier to know every single major and minor chord or every single major and minor scale without this overly complicated memorization based process that some teachers do. I'm all about let's get to the pattern so that we can see. Yeah, it's hard to explain without seeing it in action, but when we turn to numbers, there are cool patterns in music. Someone's wondering if I played any video games. Uh, not many. Some of the video games I really liked as a kid were these ones by the brand Humongous Entertainment, which were little point and click adventures that were sort of like clue based inventory little puzzles and stories. And they were mostly good, not because of the gaming mechanisms, more so that it was nice animation, music and story and such. But those I really liked where you sort of inventory puzzle based point and click or move around games like that I liked. And some of the books I'm writing almost remind me of that and are giving me weird flashbacks because I'm writing a sort of choose your own adventure ish book and out of several book projects I'm working on. But I never was a deep gamer. I currently spend almost no time gaming. My brother likes gaming, so sometimes I like tune into what he's doing, but I it's not a bug I personally got. If anything, like I mentioned in a stream a while ago, I'm more likely to design video games in my life uh, with a team who knows more about game mechanisms. Like I would design the story or inventory puzzles or such, you know. I'm more likely to design games than I would be to play them. I like game theory, which is a math thing, but you could also say game theory in a less common way. Oh, I also like the channel game theory kind of, even though I don't like playing games. The guy Matt Pat, who runs all those theory channels, is pretty cool. I don't really like the game theory one as much as the others, honestly, because I'm not a gamer. It's like, you know, I actually prefer his food one because of that, but or his TV one. But <laughs> game theory, which means a lot of things, could mean designing a video game and the mechanisms that go into that. And I am interested in how you would make a good map for a game, how you would make good inventory for a game, stuff like that. And so I would like to actually, way back in the day, I have notebooks from the past filled with game maps and stuff like that that I would invent for fun. Sometimes when I'm falling asleep and need something to think about, I'll imagine stuff like that. Like what things could combine in a way that would be puzzling and take a little while to work through. So it's not an immediate goal. I have many goals to achieve before this one, but at some point in the future, I like the idea of contributing to a game that I like co-design and the other co-designer knows a lot more about game design and I am contributing more so story and puzzles and such. So uh, we've been doing a lot of just chatting with the chat and I haven't even pulled open the graphs yet. The graphs will be coming. Uh, I know the title was about graphs, so I should throw some of those in and sequences and such, some things I wanted to describe. Pretty soon after I answer one or two more questions, the first thing I'll probably show to make sure I get it somewhere in the stream is that cool math list that I got put on. The cool list of math communicators that combo class got included on. And somebody's mentioning cool puzzle-like games. It's just not really something I enjoy the feeling of because I'm not really a technology guy. So I could have fun with it, I just, you know, if I was like at a friend's house and they were like, here's a very puzzle based video game. Here's how it works. I would enjoy playing it for 10 minutes or something, but a, I would get bored kind of quick 
B, I, if on my own, it wouldn't be worth the setup. It wouldn't be worth figuring out how to download the thing and everything for, I'm probably going to get bored after 10 minutes. But, and that's not because of the math. It's because I'm not a technology guy. I am very old fashioned. My classroom's outdoors. I got good at learning cameras and instruments and a few pieces of technology that would help me share my ideas with the world. But I don't know. Anyone who lives in the Bay Area who's good at technology, you should also reach out to me, similar to anybody who um, is good at graphic design who wants to help me, stuff like that. Also, email me or something if you live in the Bay Area of California and you're good at doing tech for live streams or stuff like that. That's the part I don't like. And so I'm just like not the guy who is bred to like video games or born or something about the way my mind works. And the comment does say that they don't play video games, but they were so impressed by the game, they're bringing it up anyway. So maybe I'll check it out. That is, you know, a they're, maybe they're coming from a similar boat to me of not normally someone who likes games. So that but it does make me more likely to check it out. And I did hear the story about two high schoolers that proved the Pythagorean theorem in a different way. I'm not sure if their proof's actually been released yet. All it said when it first came out was that like a few people had reviewed it and that it was new and cool, but the proof wasn't available for people to look at right away. Um, it might be out now, so I should check that. Apparently there were two high school students who found a uh, proof that they derived the Pythagorean theorem from trigonometry in a way that mathematicians thought would have had to be circular or a way of de uh, deriving the proof that wasn't possible. That was one that the news headlines ran wild with, though. The news headlines are like, two high schoolers proved the Pythagorean theorem, which mathematicians thought was impossible. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is one of the most proven theorems in history. I have a short with a proof of it. There's so many, there's like some videos on YouTube probably. I bet if you look up 100 proofs of the Pythagorean theorem, I bet that's an article or video. There's... Count the uh, the president Garfield, one of the presidents of the United States, invented a proof to the Pythagorean theorem. It's like a hobbyist of math can even find a new proof to it because it's such a simple statement. You can come at it from so many different angles. There are thousands upon thousands of proofs of it. So the media went a little wild when they were saying a lot of sources. I saw headlines that completely phrased it as if this is an unproven thing. What possibly happened, which I should look into more, is that a new form of proving it that was not seen before has emerged. So that's cool. I have not looked into it too much, but shout out to those high schoolers if they found a new method of proving that. And anti shout out to the news articles who put in the headline that the Pythagorean theorem itself hadn't been proven. So Remember to be really careful about what you read in the media. People so often quote something that was a headline and they didn't read the article. Don't quote a headline without reading the article. Even reading one article is, you know, pushing it. If you're going to cite one article without having checked it among many other sources, it's already kind of pushing it to just cite one article. But to just cite a headline, the... You know, people have gotten pretty short attention spans these days. But if you have a short attention span, then just don't be as cocky with saying you know facts. You know, uh, say you know a fact when you have been willing to spend an hour reading about it. Which, I mean, no one's perfect. I'm sure in some live stream at some point, I have said something about like plants or animals, for example, that I'm less knowledgeable about that I only read from one source that was wrong. So I, I can't think of an example, but I'm sure it's happened. No one's perfect. But, you know, try and quote things as facts when you've actually spent more than one minute reading about it. <laughs> and hopefully from more than one source, but at least from actually fully reading the source. So, 
Um, that is about all for some comments here. I mean, there's a few other ones that I wasn't able to do answer right now, but I'm going to now step away from the chat for a minute. I think I've set it up where I can see the screen where, okay. So this is normally when I shrink myself or do stuff like that, you see me messing with what's called OBS, the like interface that a lot of people stream on. And it's annoying, you, got, uh, you have to see me doing the process. Now, I think I, okay, no, OBS is right there. If I put it way over here on the side, maybe. Okay. Now I can shrink myself to a degree without you seeing it. Maybe you'll have to see this for a moment, but I can shrink myself at least without you seeing the live chat. Now, this is Desmos, where we're going to pull open cool graphs. I just, not right away, I just, this is what I happen to have open. And I often start before we put the cool graph on the screen with something simpler, because it's good to just remind ourselves what we're looking at. There's a lot of different types of graphs we could do. On Desmos, it is gonna be this type of coordinate plane where X and Y are two variables we can put in an equation and these are the grid points and such and so it's good to get a reminder of like okay there's y equals 2x those are the coordinates filled in where what they called y is twice what they called x then you can go crazy and just see cool shapes and see to what degree you can still bring your intuition about oh yeah that makes sense into the crazy shapes, which gets harder once you put like sine and tangent and stuff in there. It's a little harder to intuitively know, okay, that's why that's the point. But it's good to at least start there with a graph that we can definitely gauge. That makes sense why this is the graph. Why is the x2, it makes sense 2x, this is the graph. Yeah, 2x equals y, so. Whenever I say the word Y in a sentence, I'll just start saying 2X. No, uh, but in the other ones, you know, we're gonna lose some intuition, but I like to start here in case some of it leaks over. However, before we fiddle with graphs too much, I am gonna flip over to this site that has included combo class in something that's cool. So here's a site called beautyofmathematics.com. Now this has a lot of sections on the top and I'm actually not sure if this is a website that I have stumbled into in the past. I, I, I'm i pretty sure that I would have bumped into it at some point in time. I'm not sure if I've read any of their articles in the past, but the name kind of rings a bell. There's a good chance that I have read stuff from here before. And shout out to the creator. And... If we go to the blog section here, we can see that maybe it's not under the blog section. Let's see. It was under, if I go, I'm not sure where it is on the links right here, maybe under science communication. And yeah, here we go. So under science communication here, they say, explore over a hundred links and meet the storytellers who bring mathematics to life. And it's a super cool long article. They have a lot of different people who are what you could call math communicators and you got TV like Schoolhouse Rock. I loved that as a kid. It was a great educational show. There are songs that are educational to any parents out there. If you have a kid who's like less than 10, Highly recommend this show. Don't know this one. Uh, Sesame Street's cool. But importantly, as you go down here, we get to a section. Here's some podcasts about video streaming. And video streaming, number one Vsauce. Great first choice. They even say they primarily get their information from YouTube along with books and blogs. I get a lot of info from YouTube um, and books. And Vsauce is a great first choice. I'm not sure if they ordered them in any way, um, if it's like the ones that they watch the most first or if it's completely random. But in any case, Vsauce is a great first choice. I would say that Vsauce is possibly my favorite channel on YouTube. Now, I wouldn't call it my favorite math channel, 
because it only some of his videos are math and a lot more of them are philosophy or science. But man, the videos Michael Stevens makes are amazing. So that's a great first choice. Number file, classic for math. I assume that most people here watch a lot of these. Oh, I'm kind of blocking it. Let's see. So we got number file. Uh, number file is one of those ones that is a little more, you could say hit or miss in that they interview different people every time. And some of those people are better at explaining stuff than others, but the, there's not many misses and the hits are very hits. So number files, great, you know, highly recommend if anyone's ever bored, just seeing what number file topics catch your eye and three blue on Brown. If we were saying my favorite channel on YouTube, gun to my head, I'll say Vsauce probably. If we're saying my favorite math channel on YouTube, I would probably have to tie three blue one brown with what might actually be my favorite and might actually edge out three blue one brown a little bit, which is Mathologer, which unfortunately wasn't included in this list. That's a little shame that they didn't put Mathologer on the list because that might be my favorite math channel. And three blue on brown is more visual and mathologer is a little deeper into the heart of as if you're studying a number theory textbook. So not like deeper per se in how deep the topic is, but you'll probably be more engaged and get more of an intuitive gut feeling for things with three blue on brown due to his visuals. And you'll probably get more equation-y, number-y knowledge as if you're studying a textbook from Mathologer. So three blue on brown, great choice here. Let's pretend they put Mathologer too. Eddie Wu, I don't know him as well. So it's a little ironic. They say maybe the most well-known math teacher because I've seen most of the videos on these three channels. Maybe not most of the number file videos. There's a lot of those, but oh, actually not most of the Vsauce videos either. Maybe he has a lot of old videos, but I've seen a lot of videos on these channels and I haven't seen, I don't know this guy as well. He seems cool. So don't really have an opinion on Eddie Wu. I'll check him out sometime. And bam, combo class. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy to me. That's so cool. Convo class and this channel one year ago had no content on them. I worked really hard that year and it culminated a lot of knowledge, but this is like practically like the type of goal that I have been striving for that I thought, thought would take me years to get to. One of those goals is like this channel passed a hundred thousand. That's cool. But like, this is practically as cool to me. This is practically like a subscriber plaque to me being included in this sort of list. So man, that's crazy. Like when I saw, when I first got uh, the person who made it emailed to me and let me know. And I was like, wow, I'm honored. Let me know if you ever want to collaborate in some way. And when I got that email, I like immediately texted my mom. I was like, look at this, this is crazy. So that's awesome and beautiful. And I think that they're doing a good thing. They're doing a good choice because we're just at the start of all the cool math that I'm gonna show the world. Uh, most of my coolest topics didn't fit in grade negative one. Grade negative two, I think is gonna be even better. And so, they're doing a good thing by having this here. It's already drawn a few people to the channel. It's not going to make the channel explode by being on this list. Um, like I was chatting on the discord, I was saying, uh, the combo class discord where some people chat about cool stuff. I was mentioning there that with the, for a video to blow up, you need to have the algorithm really like it. And that means people have to watch most of it and that a ton of people have to click on it. And so it's a lot about the hook of the video that you put in the title and the thumbnail, 
more than it's about how good the video is. And so to actually make a channel blow up, you need to have a really high click rate and then a really high watch rate and a lot of comments on the video. And that's not what I focus as much on when designing an episode. Like when I make an episode, I'm usually like, this is a topic I need to make an episode about. And then I have to think about like, what am I going to call this? As opposed to coming up with a title that I think would be catchy and then making the episode like some creators might do. And so it's hard to make a thing blow up. This won't make it blow up. However, there's also drawing viewers you want on your channel there. And this is the exact type of viewer I want on my channel. The type of people who read this list and know these channels, but don't know me yet. This is exactly the type of viewers I want. Ones who would read this, who have already clicked on these ones and now need something new to click on. What's extra cool is that this links to combo class and where they say there's live streams most days, although it would be more accurate to say bonus content most days that's sometimes in video form, sometimes a short, sometimes a live stream that um, this links to the Demotro channel. So they put both. In fact, like, you know, arguably, if you count only the double ones, I'm like the second one on this list that got two links. So, wow. That makes me almost as proud as like uh, passing a certain amount of thousands of subscribers, such as Another thing I'm proud of, which is we just passed 117,000 subscribers here. We did pass another amount. It wasn't worth making a subscriber special about, but 117,000 were there. So those are two pretty cool things. Something not as cool is that I've been feeling mildly sick. I think I got like a mild cold a few days ago. It wasn't too bad, but I've been like mildly under the weather. I think hopefully mostly better. My voice might be a tiny bit scratchy in tomorrow's episode. Now, here we get other ones. Tibbies, or however you pronounce that. She's cool. Don't know these ones. Oh, this is cool. Mathematical visual proofs. Underrated channel. Don't know all these. Vi Heart, cool. Khan Academy, great. Quantum Magazine, I read that. A lot of good ones. Oh, this is underrated. PBS Infinite Series. Um... Now, they're saying it's hosted by these people because those were the current hosts. Those people did a good job, but to be honest, their best videos are when it was an older host named Kelsey. If you go back and look at the videos she made, this other host called Kelsey, uh, when this the earlier videos on this channel, those were really good. The videos by these people on the channel were good too. And for some reason, PBS stopped funding it because it wasn't getting enough views or something. So they don't make new ones. So, 24 hour maths, that intrigues me, but it says they've only done two streams. It sounds kind of, I don't know this channel, but it kind of sounds like some guy was like, 24 hour math. I'm gonna make a channel where for 24 hours in a row all the time, I do math. And then after doing twice that he went for 24 hours in a row talking math, he was like, oh man, this is hard. So, a lot of great ones. They also have, they put some of these under number file presenters, but it links to their own channels. Like Matt Parker here goes to the Stand Up Maths channel. That's a great channel. And these people have good channels. You know, I actually like all of these people on this list. I've watched all these people. So, which I think apart from Tom Scott, I think that all these people I did learn about from first seeing them on number file. So shout out to Brady who makes number file for getting all these people known by people like me. Now I even like own books by Matt Parker. I own both the books he's written. They're great. So actually Matt Parker is on one of my dreams to collaborate with someday. The guy around stand up maths. Love that guy. He's awesome. 
And I want to talk to James Grime about intransitive dice sometime. This guy does, he's done some episodes about uh, intransitive dice is this cool paradoxical dice concept. And he's made his own set. And I've done a bunch of research on that on my own. That is going to be an episode someday of like taking that way further. And so I feel like he'd be interested in what I've found. So pretty awesome. Oh, we got some books. Uh, Flatland is a cool book. A uh, little culturally outdated. It has some weird like old school cultural tropes that are a little weird, but like the math in that is really good. You know what else is really good? Dandelion who just came here. I don't know if you heard his squeak, but we got a dandelion visiting our classroom. Dandy. Okay, it's a little dandelion. That's a good boy. Okay, so I'll be petting Dandelion. I'm not sure if we're going to have the best view of him, but if I'm hunched over in a weird position while we're doing this, it is because I'm petting a very soft cat. And somebody says, they wonder if any people who discovered me through the website are here now. Good question. It seems possible because they mentioned the streams on the website, and this is the first stream I've done since the website came out. Or maybe somebody will uh, be watching the stream after the fact because they found it from the list. If so, welcome. Make sure you're also tuned into the main Combo Class channel where my more perfectionist episodes go. And I'm excited for a crazy, what I call, grade negative two. And to anyone wondering about prerequisites, no, you do not have to have attended grade negative one to attend grade negative two. It's recommended that you by attending i mean having watched all the videos on the main combo class channel that are related to whatever topics you care about or hopefully all of them and maybe watched all the shorts on this channel and bonus videos on this channel i don't expect people to have watched all of the live streams although like i mentioned once if you're a diehard enough fan that you have watched all the live streams let me know that is awesome and i bet there's like out of the 100,000 or whatever subscribers, I bet there's like three of you who watch every single stream. So to those three of you, if you exist, wow, that's cool. Thank you. Now, to, uh, yeah, just last thing about the prerequisites would be, I do recommend watching those uh, things, particularly the math episodes on the main Combo Class channel, not on this channel. However, no prerequisites are necessary. These videos are their own little thing. Occasionally, there could be videos that need to be watched in the series where at the beginning of the second one, I'm like, I'm not going to re-explain stuff. Just watch the first one. But almost always when I make videos that even if I intend them to be sort of like a series, they are their own units. You folks don't even know, but Many of the episodes in grade negative one could be seen as the first part of like a series that I'm going to do about certain topics, but I have created little discrete chunks of some view or fact about them. And so uh, I try and make every episode have all the explainers that, you know, if you've passed middle school and you think hard enough, hopefully you could understand all of my episodes. You don't even necessarily need to have gone through college or whatever, but that doesn't always work and you have to make different assumptions of what people know or don't know. I'm editing an episode right now, the one from tomorrow, and I keep wondering what things do I throw in reminder definitions of? Because at first I was like, okay, at near the beginning when I say prime number, Maybe I'll throw a little reminder that's like prime numbers are the positive integers that have only two factors, which are one in themselves, considering, you know, the positive factors in that case. And then I was like, okay, well, then I'll need to define positive integers. I'll need to define factors. Started defining those. It led to more words. I'm like, I'll need to define those words. And then I was like, no, okay, I'm overthinking this. Anybody who's going to care about this episode needs to know what primes are already. Delete that. However, later in the episode, when I say rational number, there might be people who watch the episode who like know what a prime number is, but kind of forget 
Which ones were the ones called rational? What did that include exactly? So I do have a pop-up later in the episode that's like, reminder, this is the definition of rational number. And it's kind of hard to pick when I put those reminders. What I assume people know going into the episode, if it's the first video from my channel they've seen. Do I assume they know what factors are? Do I, you know, a little tricky. So sometimes what I might do in the future is I haven't really put together a plan for this, but I thought it might make sense to add definitions in the dis oh, squirrel alert. I hear the sound. Oh no, that was dandelion. Dandelion's just messing around with stuff back there. Dandy. To those who don't know, dandelion is the fluffiest of my cats. He's called that because he is dandy. He is a lion. He is as fluffy as a dandelion. And sometimes he gets dandelion stuck to his fur. Well, that's a lot of double meanings. So, um, in any case, I try and make my episodes digestible as single units, even if there's going to be a future episode that builds off the idea, but it's hard. So, oh, somebody says they're one of them. They came from the list. That's super cool. All right. And... Are there negative primes? Well, this almost relates to tomorrow's episode. It, it, the Tomorrow's episode is not about negative primes. But the way I would go about explaining an answer to that is almost related to tomorrow's topic. So why don't you wait for that? And by tomorrow's topic, to anyone new, reminder... This is my last perfectionist channel, the main combo class channel. We'll be having tomorrow's full episode. So, somebody said, is this a mailbox stream? Where uh, I think you mean because I said, there will be times where I unwrap things I've gotten from my mailbox. This isn't. I need to go back to the mailbox because the mailbox I got that was the most affordable but could accept any mail carrier and the people running the place seem chill was not that close to my house it's like a 10 minute drive or something so it's not like super in my neighborhood or anything i'm able to go there maybe every other week or something and i did get a notification there's something new there so i do need to pop by there when i have time Maybe sometime this weekend or early next week. So this isn't quite my next mailbox stream yet. I do have here some of the awesome items that I got in the mailbox from one of my Patreon supporters and viewers, George, who, as a reminder, <clears throat> I will do my note of the stream, which is that if you want to help out the channel, of course, comments do help, and I love you all, but if you are able to provide extra help. The combo class Patreon page is very helpful for letting me get cool props around here, hire camera people more days of the week and stuff. And some props I also got sent to me. Things that I maybe even would have bought at some time on my own because they're cool things. Such as to show the stuff we have again. Let me pull this up. So I'm going to grow myself again just for a second, just to show one more look at the last stuff we got in the mailbox. We have our Galton or Galton board and this Galton board. That noise spooked Dandelion hearing these things fall down. He's funny. He's like the chillest cat when he's in, when he's like in a trusting mood, he will like run in front of his family members, like the humans who live with him and like flop out with his belly up and just like be laying and sleeping with all limbs in the air, trusting the world. But if he hears the wrong sound, he'll like tweak out and jump and freak out. He gets spooked. So dandelion, dandy. So, all sorts of good animals out here. It's not just the squirrels and the birds. We get cats, too. Now, this is the Galton board, which shows that when we make little balls, hit little pegs, starting from the center, and then semi-randomizing which direction they go, that we will end up with a normal distribution, sometimes known as a bell curve, of the pattern they fall into. And it's a little different each time because 
they're not falling in that shape because they like tried to force it to they're falling in that shape because that's how the math works <laughs> so this is cool it also will be a little different if it's ever at a slant i'm imagining this is probably at a slant because this mud it has like dice here holes there so i imagine the table's not perfectly level so there's that and we got strange mirrored sunglasses and more I don't think I have my, the thing I built in the last stream that's really cool called the Tensegrity table. I think that's indoors right now. So I don't have that right here. I need to bring it back out. But normally we also have this cool little thing called a Tensegrity table. These glasses are uh, gonna come in handy because if I ever wanna look like I'm looking at the viewers, but actually be looking down, it's like this. So right now I'm actually looking right here. The area you probably can't see. So, uh, thanks, George, and to whoever is wondering about the next mailbox stream. There'll be one or two streams from now when I get the chance to go back to that mailbox. The link to that mailbox is in the description for anybody who has any old clocks or dice or abacai or calculators. Those are some items that are guaranteed, even if they're in trashy shape, as long as they're safe to send in the mail, regardless of how trashed they are. I will accept any clock, any die, dice, you know, any calculator or abacai. Don't have to work. And other stuff you can gauge, you know, whether you, th uh, there is like a three minute video to watch that's linked in the description by the address that's like, just to be clear, here are the things you shouldn't send, just, you know, but it's mostly intuitive. People who watch my channel could guess what I like, you know, and, I will be able to uh, stop by there at some point this week. And somebody's asking, let's see. All right. So somebody says they hope there's not some sort of bomb in the mailbox. Now, uh, that's fine to have here now, but in the future, it's not even really good to joke about that stuff because it's just like, worst case scenario, get, people get dumb ideas by reading stuff. You know, if nobody had ever sent something dangerous in the mail, less people would have gotten the idea to. So let's not even really joke about generally sending dumb stuff. Just know that I am careful when I open the packages, try not to send anything too sharp though, or whatever. I don't think anyone is going to try and harass me in that way, but Know that if you send me anything weird or come to the cl combo classroom uninvited, I would call the cops on you. Now, and someone says, don't send a full-sized Big Ben in the mail. I'm not sure what the largest clock they would accept is. I don't think they would accept this clock that I have here. The uh, place would have, normally they text me when there's a notification that they're like holding a product or holding some mail for me, but they would have called me and been like, dude, we're holding this like one day. If you don't get this, we're leaving this on the street. <laughs> but so I don't know what their size limitation is. I don't think normally size limitations are an issue when people get their mail at a private mailbox. So if anyone is going to test them, you know, don't send anything too big unless it's one of those four things I mentioned. If you want to try and send a grandfather clock, I'm not going to say no. Well, I'm just going to say be safe. Now, let's see. So, yeah, someone took a note of the guaranteed um, ones that are sendable. But there's other things you could guess that I would like that fit in lines with the combo class. You know, if it's something that you think you can imagine me having put here in the background on purpose anyway, then, you know, give it your best guess, send it over. As long as it's safe, I don't mind if it's trashy, you know, really what I designed it for was I figure people have old clocks that they don't need that are broken or whatever, but there's many other possibilities such as getting cool mirrored sunglasses and Let's see. 
I want to show you folks something really cool while we have the full view on me. So, well, actually, okay, real quick, let's finish off what we were doing with the list. Um, they have some books here. Let's see. I might buy some more of these books. I often only buy whatever books I can get a good used copy of. Uh, cause you know, if you can get it, if you can get it cheap used, why not? Why buy it new? I mean, it's good to support publishers, but used books are a great aspect of our reality too. And so I like to buy cheap used books. So sometimes there'll be a book that I would have bought, but I didn't because I couldn't find a cheap used one. And I think a few of these are like that. And a few of these I do have, I have this book. Here's looking at Euclid. I actually bought that kind of recently. I haven't read it yet. So that's good. I have this, which is an annotated version of Alice in Wonderland, uh, annotated by the great Martin Gardner. I don't think I have this one, but I have a, another really similar one, which is Dover Books on Mathematics, something else number theory. Um, let's see. These all sound really good. I'm going to look up later which of these I can find cheap used copies of. Uh, this is a great book, The Phantom Toll Booth. It's like fiction, but it has some mathematical stuff in it. It's kind of like a fiction, almost kid's book, but it's worth reading as an adult too. And to clarify, uh, if I ever call something like kid's book, I do not mean that as a diss. Kid's books can be works of art. Um, this I saw came out. There's a number file presenter. I was like, that book sounds cool, but I couldn't find a used copy, so I don't have it yet as an example. I have both these. Love Matt Parker. I have this. That's a good author too. I have this. And this one was too expensive for me to choose to buy yet. So I've heard this one recommended. Might get that one next. So yeah, great recommendations here. We got stuff here. We got, oh man, this website was waiting for this to happen. There's one of the newer math discoveries is this thing called an aperiodic monotile, which I'll probably make an episode about. At first I was like, okay, I'll just let one of the other channels who's probably gonna make a channel about the uh, video about this soon explain it. I imagine that like either number file, stand up maths, one of those channels in that world would have made a video about it yet, but I haven't seen a video. I'm sure there are people who have made videos about it, but I haven't come across one yet. I'll look it up at some point, but maybe I'll have to make a video about this thing. The aperiodic monotile they discovered probably will do a video about it. Not sure which channel or degree of perfectionism I'll put into it, but it's a cool idea the aperiodic monotile they discovered. There's also kind of a misconception about it that uh, it is a monotile if you allow its flipped copy, but it's, you need a flipped copy of it. So there's some misconceptions about it too. But this website was waiting for this to come out. It's, it is called an aperiodic monotile. And I'm assuming this website or whatever it is, was already called the aperiodical. So for an aperiodic monotile to come out, man, this website was eaten that day. Um, one that I read sometimes is Quanta Magazine. It's a little like, you don't wanna, I don't wanna say dumbed down cause that seems mean, but it's a little bit um, steering toward they want anyone to be able to understand the topic more than they necessarily need to care about including all of the really deep parts. But I don't mind that. You know, if you want to look up the really deep parts, you can look them up after you read the Quantum Magazine article. And they're pretty cool. Scientific American, they were where Martin Gardner originally wrote many brilliant columns that are now compiled into great books. And here we go. Wolf from Alpha. Have it as one of my tabs open. Uh, Wolf from Math World. I didn't have it open because I could have gotten there here quickly, but highly recommend to people who don't know. It's sort of a 
Wikipedia like sector of Wolfram Alpha. Or I guess of Wolfram. I guess the Alpha is the calculator part. Um, don't know this one as much. What's Math Communications Wiki? Let's see what's up with that. This sounds cool. Uh, I'll check this out more sometime. Sounds cool. But this type of thing in general, a wiki or Wikipedia in general on its own or one that is a something wiki is great. Encyclopedias are awesome. You know, they're not your end source at the end of the day because they're easier for random people to contribute to. But you need something for random people to contribute to if you're going to have something with as much info as Wikipedia has. So... I love Wikipedia. I don't know if they included it here. It gets a kind of bad rap because sometimes people cite it as a source or trust things they read on it without double checking. But as a beginning to any sort of studying, to get introduced to certain topics, see what you're missing in certain topics, I read Wikipedia all the time. It's just not the final thing that I make sure I've gotten my data correct with. But for fun just to see what, how different topics connect and what I might be missing. I read Wikipedia all the time. So stuff like that in general is good. Khan Academy, um, I never really have spent much time studying on it, but I've seen a few of their videos and resources and they're great, done great things for the world. OEIS, I have that open. I have that as a tab open here too. And other cool ones. Cut the Knots a fun site. So this episode is probably going to make people watch my videos a lot less in the next month. Everyone's going to be doing all this other math stuff. I don't care. Sometimes I recommend other stuff. This is obviously not like great for my channel to keep telling people other stuff to consume. However, it's good for the world. So you know me. I am too honest. If I think everyone should watch Mathologer, I'm going to tell people to, even if it removes my views. Oh, I want to go to these parks. That sounds cool. I mean, the one called the park. That one, park. All right. So, a lot of great stuff going on here. So, this is an excellent list. Hey, what are these? So, these, I guess, are just people. So, some people from before snuck on here again. I was like, these fellows are back. So, yeah. Yeah. Great list that this person put together. I'm definitely going to check out more on what is on this Beauty of Mathematics site. This person is a math communicator themselves by doing this. And thank you for including me. I'm so honored that I'm down here. That is just so cool. And thank you for putting both channels. Um, so... Now, Wolfram Alpha also apparently uh, chat GPT somehow convinced Wolfram Alpha to combine with them. So maybe chat GPT, that online robot that people talk about that um, I've shown in the past is a good example of do not trust modern headlines that say this AI is good at so and so because there were headlines coming out saying this is good at math. And it was I have proof that's still in all the saved stuff and in my old live streams that it was so much worse than a kindergartner at math. And because anything it would say that was beyond kindergarten level, it would get wrong. And it's like, it doesn't help that it sometimes says a cool fact in between the wrong bits. If you ask it a question and within its answer, it has a bunch of wrong stuff. The answer is wrong. You can't use the answer if you don't know what parts of it are wrong or not. And I don't think I got a single math answer from it that didn't contain something wrong. Something that if you had put it as an answer on an essay, your teacher would go like, pull you aside after class and ask what you're thinking. And so maybe I'll check this out in the future. I don't know if this is only for a paid version or the free version or what, but I heard something about ChatGPT pairing up with Wolfram Alpha. Maybe it will become good at math 
but it's not going to be that chat GPT's organization did something magical. It's going to be that they got paired up with a really good online calculator. Wolfram Alpha is what some people want chat GPT to be. It's like, hi, what are, you don't really say hi. So I, this probably will throw it off, but I'm going to see if it just accepts it. Hi, what are the, what is the prime factorization of 36? And look, see, it did it. So this is what a lot of people want chat GPT to be. Oh wait, are we still just seeing me? No, okay, cool, we got it. That, that is my worst. Uh, it's still sometimes when I worry it might've happened, I get this jumping feeling like when you're like, oh no, when I think that uh, I might have done this issue I did back in the day sometimes and still do once in a while where I have the screen on my face for like half an hour while I'm describing something that I think you can see. Okay, I think I've gotten better at not doing that anymore. So, um, hello to everybody leaving these other comments. I'm taking a peek at the comments now. And... A lot of good, interesting ones there. I think ChatGPT, since I mentioned it, will show up in an episode at some point because I've gotten such hilariously bad answers from it that I kind of want to compile them. And I'll make a little episode that it's more so going to be about the idea of AI is starting to take over certain things. You're going to hear a lot of headlines about what it can do and what it's about to do and stuff. Be very hesitant believing those headlines because so far it's the headlines have like been like chat GPT is good at math and it's like awfully terrible. And then eventually pairs up with Wolfram and they're like, see, I told you so it's good at math. So they're, the headlines and are trusting the robot, essentially. And the robot is usually wrong. <laughs> so uh, people have a, I, I find it very cool what ChatGPT does. It's very amazing that it's possible. However, what is amazing about it? What's amazing is that it can resemble a fake version of a human. But we have to remember, it's a fake version of a human. This fake version of a human, I'm impressed that it can string together sentences usually, but the content of the sentences isn't necessarily good. It self-contradicts itself. It does things that even if you didn't know any info, you should be programmed to not contradict, just like saying something's true and then saying that it's not true in a row. And so... It is amazing, but let's remember that when something is half the time wrong and people are like, no, it's getting better. Now it's only a quarter of the time wrong. It's right more often than it's not. Well, that's still so far from something that you would trust with your homework, something that's right three quarters of the time. Not even meaning that three quarters of the answers are right meaning that three quarters of the content of each answer is right. When three quarters of the content of an answer is right, that's not even really enough to make the answer right. So it's sort of like every answer it gives is wrong because they're all about half of the sentences correct, about half of the sentences false. And you'd have to know a lot about math. You'd have to be really smart to be able to know exactly which of its sentences to be like, nope, that was one of the lies. Yep, that was one of the ones to trust. So, it is useful and we will have more fun with it in the future, but we will be partially laughing at it. So, what we've done so far is look at that cool list and I wanted to show Wolfram Alpha's coolness at various points anyway. So that was a good tangent to that. Now, while we chat, I might pull up some graphs, which were also in the title. But actually first, you know what we're gonna do? I have to go back to my full size me 
And we are going to look at one or two cool things that grew in the background of the combo class. Things that grew in the combo class, huh? Combo class can have a lot of surprises. Now, for example, if you saw the grade negative one finale, we found salamanders after the classroom flooded and then got, got cleaned up after the flooded area. Salamanders. I did not expect those in the combo class ever, unless they had been brought in. They were brought in by like the rain or the river or something. I don't know. And other things can grow around here too. Outdoor classrooms evolve. And that's part of why I like being out here because sometimes you get a cool thing without even needing to try. It's almost like me going to my mailbox and just getting some free cool stuff that makes our classroom cooler. Sounds almost too good to be true. You know what else sounds almost too good to be true? Well, I like hanging up decorations back there. Normally that would require finding another cheap used broken clock to put back there. But sometimes nature gives you decorations for free. Look at what grew on this little ledge. Look at this mushroom. Do you see that mushroom? I can't get that close of a view. I don't want to lift it or touch it, but that is a straight up mushroom that grew out of the moss on that ledge in between my clocks. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to, you know, leave a little space so no clocks mess with it. I think it's a nice addition. Now, I also planted some things in this planter bin. And in the planter bin, I planted onions, garlic, and potato. They're not even all fully buried because I had left them in there for a while. Their roots started to sink in. And then I was like, well, now I can't fully bury them because I'll be ripping up the roots if I change stuff. So some of them look like they're sitting on top of the soil, but their roots are doing weird stuff. So the onions and garlic are doing some cool stuff. They make these sprouts. So one of the first things you'd notice is these sprouts, like these things. However, an even cooler thing happened. It was with the potato. So one of my goals is to someday grow a potato fruit. Yep, potatoes have fruits. It's not the tuber at the bottom in the dirt. It's a part of the plant that we don't cultivate because it's poisonous. It's in the family that tomatoes are in and looks like a small tomato. But tomatoes are lucky. They're one of the nightshades we can eat. And there's a lot of nightshades we can't eat, including potato fruit. So, with potato fruit, I don't know if we'll be able to grow it. I don't know if this is going to fully get us there. But first, one must have potato sprouts, a potato plant. And so I left some potatoes here. And look at all this. So, let's see how I can show this. This is growing out of a potato. All of this right here came out of a potato. In fact, so those came out of the semi-buried potato. No, actually a lot of them, maybe all of them, came out of this potato that's like sitting on top of the soil right there, if you can see it. But who knew that potatoes would make such a thick vined, durable looking, interesting thing. So we'll see where that goes next. If you look in the background of episodes, you'll probably be able to see it. And maybe even in the background of these live streams. Yep, it has gotten to the point where it's seeable. Stuff under this level-ish wasn't seeable anymore. I mean before, because the planter is blocking it. But now the potato fruit is past the level where we can see its sprouts. Cool. So that's pretty cool. All right. Now, somebody is saying they can't ID the mushroom from here. Um, maybe I will take a picture of it to put in the Discord at some point because it's hard to aim my laptop camera at it. So maybe at some point I will show people a picture and they can identify it. I actually have a friend who's 
he, he prob probably doesn't know as much mycology, which is studying mushroom like stuff. But I have a friend who knows a lot about other plants and he'll be able to tell me what's up with the potato, ID some other stuff around here. And then I have a friend who knows about the birds. So I'm going to have those people over at some point to identify certain things and like know what species of bird visit us and stuff. All right. And someone recommends piling the soil around them. I could pile the soil around them to bury them more, but I think they're doing okay. Surprisingly, I don't know. I think that the top potato might rot and it might make a new potato under because that's part of the point of a potato plant is to grow the tuber. Now, let's see. Okay, thank you for all the good comments, I guess. Since I mentioned it in the title, I might change the title on the finished version because our stream today was more about math lists and springtime and such than graphs. But we'll whip up a few graphs. So, like, for example, the one that I put in the thumbnail, I'll at least show you folks, which is, like... In a few stages, we might first wonder, when is sine of x less than or equal to sine of y? Oh, it's a grid. When is sine of x squared less than or equal to sine of y squared? Oh, it's this thing. This thing's cool. Now, you could try and take the exponents up, but that's not going to be as much. We're going to get different shapes with different exponent combos. Fours makes it wider like that. Threes kind of skews it. But instead of doing just those, what we're going to do is we are going to add mods. And for mods, we normally look at whole numbers and say how far, like what congruence class am I in based on multiples of it? But this isn't going to use them in a number theory-ish way as much as just seeing wacky shapes it's going to make. It's going to be hard to visualize exactly how the mod is doing this. But what the mod does is if I put it on part of the equation... It's going to do the remainder of that that it has if we divided by a certain value. And for example, if I want it to be, what's the remainder more than one? I could try and do it, but I think I got my parentheses mixed up there. Yeah. So this is when the remainder of the sine of x squared is less than or equal to sine of y squared. And by remainder from 1, that's like the fractional component of the number. Let's also put it on this side, too. Although we already got sort of like, remember we had a burger factory the other day? These look sort of like little strings of candies, like candies with wrappers all stringed together. Now... Putting a mod over here. Also, we can see this is what we get when the fractional component of sine of x squared is less than or equal to the fractional component, basically like the part after the decimal, the fractional component of sine of y squared. So where could we take this? Well, one way we could take this is to turn the ones or some of them into a slider. But for this slider, let, well, yeah, we'll let it slide through the intermediate values. So we can make things vanish. And if I just put that slider on the X one, it does it in sort of this way where we lose stripes, but the other direction still has a bunch of stuff. If I put it on this one as well, then it's a little more symmetrical. And 
Then if we want to try other weird changes, something that can be fun that gives the computer a kind of hard time, but is still fun to see how, you know, with a simple enough equation over here, which these are on the simpler end, it should work, is to go mod something in the mod of, which mod we're in is actually just the second number after parentheses here, or the second number after the comma in parentheses. If we turn one of these into an X or something, things start to change. Like if I'm in mod of not a slider, but of whatever the X coordinate is. And if I set them both to X, so now I'm at the sine of X squared in mod of whatever X is at that spot is less than or equal to the sine of Y squared in the mod of whatever X is still. If I give them their own one over here, where we put y squared in mod y, x squared in mod x, we get this. This strange web that it's having trouble visualizing when we go too far. It has some interesting patterns bulging out at different points of it. And if we set them to just, well, then let's set them to each other maybe and see if that looks much different. We get this now when they're set to each other and we have these strange, infinitely dense things. Very surreal looking. Now, if we look at them in a single one, we get this awesome thing that's part of the thumbnail I made. This like infinite trail like thing that looks too glitchy from back here to look that cool. But when you zoom in, all the parts of it have this crazy denseness, this infinite center to them. And they form these bursts and these eyes and stuff. And we can see stuff that really looks like an eye. If I flip this, um, the way I am going to flip this will be I flip the inequality and I flip which ones were over here from X's to Y's. And now I've made it sideways. So now I've essentially flipped it to the side. So when we're on this view, where were the, or I guess the other one was actually easier to see the eyes maybe. Hmm. Well, this kind of looks like two eyes, sort of looks like a superhero mask staring you down right there. But I guess the other way was actually the one that had extra clear eyes we could zoom in on. If you go, here down a little bit and look at one of these zones. Don't these look like eyes staring at you? All right, that's wild. Now, if we then try to make my whole thumbnail what I did to make the whole thumbnail when I was fiddling around setting up this stream and wanted something cool in the thumbnail, I had found this graph and then I noted, let's make it more symmetrical by making a friend that's the flipped version of it. X is turned to Y's there, but not in the other spots actually. You can, you know, leave a comment if you want to try and explain to anyone why this flips it flipping the inequality and the mods, but not the others. So we'll make them the same color. And we have now gotten to my thumbnail that I made, which was a bit more zoomed in, I think, so we could see a little more, or I forget what I used for the thumbnail. Maybe I didn't use this whole thing. I don't know, something like this. And a lot of eyes. There's an eye staring us down right there, as well as others. So these are fun and you can always try adding other changes like coefficients, pluses, minuses, tweak the exponent, turn the signs to other stuff. And one that I want to try real quick is turning these signs into tangents. That creates this other like wispy trail within them. That's a whole different pattern. If we make this one a tangent as well, we should get even more something or another. 
What happens when we have it on just one? See, this is another new interesting double graph thing. Some cool shapes. All that dust is stuff that if you zoom into it, there's an infinite amount of stuff going on. So, lots of cool stuff going on in the chat as well. And in a moment, I'm going to need to take a little break to check on, I'm house sitting for some neighbors on the block and they have birds and other things like that. I need to check over at that house real quick. But let me see um, what else I have in my plans. Another thing I was considering doing in this stream, but I might do in a different stream later, is I might mention some of the topics that I've been brainstorming that will almost definitely be in grade negative two at some point, but I'm not sure if all of them will be because even just when I was making a list of like, what should be the first topic that I cover in grade negative two, I had a lot of contenders. So at some point I might let you folks vote on which of the topics you would like to see soonest and or make sure get in grade negative two instead of some future grade. So at some point I'm going to do something like that where I'm going to list about 10 math topics that are going to be written. It's going to be really vague. It's not going to spoil what actually goes into the math topic. It'll be like something related to this thing or something that this word somehow describes and let you folks vote. That's not sure if that'll be this stream or not. I need to think for a moment, but at some point to let you vote on which ones you want to make sure you see in the next couple episodes versus a little later down the line, some may show up. So let's see. Yeah, somebody's mentioning it looks like various patterns in marbling and some of them look like interference patterns you could get from, they were saying a holographic plate so a lot of cool things that these can be seen as similar to even like when I was calling them dust, that was just me seeing something from my world in the graph that resembles it. Cause you know how there's like dust glimmering in the sunlight sometimes and it goes in and out of you seeing it. And if you really looked closely, you could probably see more dust than you thought you saw. Well, this is like that. When I call this bit dust, I'm like, okay, I'm, okay. The sunlight changed a little bit. Okay. The dust is at a slightly different angle. Okay, okay, but I'm looking really close and there's a lot of dust. So that can be reminiscent of that. Also, if we go out here, it has a whole sort of different pattern. We were pretty close to the origin. This looks almost like ocean waves of a strange sort. And a lot of fun things going on in these graphs. Now, I think instead of... Um, pausing the stream for a while and then coming back to chat for a bit. I might just wrap it up on the sooner end and get to editing the combo class episode that's coming out tomorrow. And so the stream may wrap up pretty soon, but I also might make a, let's see. Oh, sorry. You weren't seeing that part. I did the thing. Right after I said, oh man, right after I said that it's been a while since I accidentally was showing my face when I thought I was describing the screen, when I thought you could see it too, well, I just did it. Okay. So somebody's mentioning canter dust, which will come up in an episode. Um, there is times dust has been mentioned in a mathematical context that while it's not what I'm referring to right here, this is not Cantor Dust, it is somewhat related feeling in that these points are like infinitely small and scattered for some of them. And what do you, what does a bunch of infinitely small scattered stuff add up to? 
you know? Dust seems to be a pretty good nickname. So, probably going to wrap up the stream pretty soon. Uh, but there may be some other random bonus videos coming out, maybe even later today. I'll be staying with... Um, oh, someone says they found a weird one. Yeah, so... I could try that one, maybe. Let's see. I'll try plugging this in. Um, let's see. Does this plug in like that? Where it, That was part of what they said. They wanted K equals that range. I'm not sure how I set that. Um, maybe you just mean that's the range it works for. So... I'll try this one real quick that corrupt converter sent over. Now, we have the squared outside, so I'm going to assume that's what we want. And like I was saying, uh, we'll wrap up soon, but there might be bonus stuff because I have my big whiteboard set up over by some nice redwood trees elsewhere nearby that I want to film something or another with those. They showed up in the episode. There's some redwood stuff, but I, it might be a good time to film some sort of video about nature or something. So to those who like the ones that are more like philosophy or nature, you may get lucky later today. And to those who like the math stuff, you will certainly get lucky in tomorrow's episode. Um, this is supposed to be on the denominator. Let's see. And let's see what this does. So they said the slider for K can be already looks pretty interesting. The slider for K can go from 0 to 2 pi. So. That is pretty cool. I like this. It's sweeping around. And it's like making this sweeping around river. That is cool. Now, I'm not sure if you meant a different thing for when you said k was between 0 and 2 pi, or if you just meant that was something related to the cycle length. What I do want to try is making this an inequality, too. Let's see what that looks like. That's cool. If you go fast, it looks like a uh, propeller. And if you go slow, it looks sort of like there's this weird river that's slowly, like, creeping sideways and changing where the river's at, and there's a bunch of little ponds. Cool, that's a fun one to play around with. Maybe we'll look for some more variations to this one at some point in the future. And... Cool. And, yeah, I could set the range to be just this cycling range, but it looks like any range will work. They'll just be repeats. This one's pretty cool. So, and someone mentioned the circles grow as they become closer to the line, and it's true. It's sort of like they're magnetized toward it. So it has an almost magnetic-like effect as it pulls them toward it. And... In general, thank you to everyone joining me here. Combo class um, is jumping into the full grade negative two math lessons now, which we will have coming on that main combo class channel for all of the next few weekends, including an episode tomorrow. And then maybe not one every single weekend, but most weeks we'll have uh, an episode there. And most days end up having something here because I have a lot of fun on this channel. Um, again, shout out to the um, person who runs Beauty of Mathematics for including me in that list on the website. Super cool. Um, that is the type of thing that makes me 
um, equally or more proud to gaining subscribers is, you know, seeing my name acknowledged alongside other math channels and such. I thought it would take longer for us to get to this point and awesome. So love you all. Thank you for joining me for all the adventures. I'm going to log off in a sec, and if you want to catch me some more, I may have time to chat on the Discord with some people later, and I may, um, I'm going to try and put out something on the Patreon, I'll make sure to either get one today or tomorrow for the people who are subscribed on there, because I have a bunch of cool bonus footage I wanted to put on there for the Patreon supporters, I just then ran into having really little space on this computer, and processing the files and putting them all into clip and export makes the editing kind of weirder and annoying right now. I have to fit like my main episode on get other stuff on a hard drive and stuff. I'm working on that today to make it easier. And then I'll have a bunch of cool footage for the people on Patreon. Once I have enough room on this computer just to export the files of it as movies, because basically in the finale episode, there was a really quick uh, field trip scene. There was a really quick camping uh, and campfire scene and a few things like that that were like an hour of footage I cut into like two minutes. And so I'm not going to post the whole hour. That would probably be, you know, boring and I would have to make sure it didn't have any private information. But I'll post like a, a very extended version of me making the campfire in the finale and me going to the marina in the finale for the Patreon people. And I'll try and make sure I get one of those or some other similar content tonight or tomorrow because it's been a minute since I've put bonus stuff on there. But I am very appreciative to the Patreon people. And I've also been putting the names of a bunch of them in the credits of episodes. All the ones who pay more than a certain amount, I have been more flexible with who I put their actual name in an actual episode to help share the love and stuff. So if you are a Patreon, you also get, if you are a Patreon of above the threshold that says that you will also get your name in the whiteboard tomorrow at the end of the episode. So thank you all um, for not just the support on there, but to any of you for joining me and watching this stuff, leaving comments and stuff like that. Remember, comments are super helpful, and to anyone who loves commenting in the chats a bunch, um, try and bring that energy also onto the main episode, the main videos too, which I'm sure a bunch of you do. But remembering that the chats aren't something that um, I need to promote as much; they're more for fun. And the other stuff, it really helps promote it to get comments like on actual videos. Even for the streams, I do like promoting them, but it helps them more to leave a comment after the fact than during the stream, like once it's processed as a video, because I make them all public. So I guess I'll note that if anyone ever watches a stream and then is at the processed version of it later and leaves a comment, I won't think that you, I won't think it's weird that you commented twice in the stream and the video. I'll think it's awesome and helpful. So. Thank you all. Maybe catch you on some of those places like the Patreon and the Discord or subreddit or stuff like that. I'll definitely catch you for tomorrow's episode if there's not a bonus thing first. But in either case, that episode will be about 16 minutes. Mostly pure math, but also keep your eye out for some squirrels. And I hope you all are having an awesome middle of April. And that's about all I had planned for today. So I'll catch you all in the next one and hope